and welcome to the latest in the Leaders with Ambition podcast series. And today I am delighted to welcome my guest, Rob Fowler. Rob is Head of Talent Acquisition at Taylor Wessing, and it's going to be such an interesting podcast today. Really um, fantastic story ahead for us. Rob actually started as an associate in SJ Berwyn and decided that law wasn't going to be for him in the end, after all that hard work and determination to achieve that, and transitioned into headhunting. Subsequently, he then um, found himself back in law, but this time as transitioning into being head of talent acquisition with Taylor Wessing, and also looking at working with the leadership team about how to improve processes and really embed ed and into the firm. So there'll be some really interesting comments about that that will come up through the conversation today. Uh, also, looking back on Rob's career, he self-funded his LPC and also didn't have a training contract when he first started doing his studies, which again, I think is fascinating. Didn't have the network to help him. So what we will see is the amount of grit, determination, hard work and this work ethic, which will come through the podcast recording today. And hopefully um, be lots of good ideas and inspirational moments for people out there. So without further ado, Rob, over to you to bring your career to light for us. Oh, Nikki, firstly, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me, Nikki. It's, it's, it's obviously Pleasure. great to be on your podcast and, and a very, very kind introduction, which you've actually summed up very, very well in terms <laughs> of my career history to date. So, um, it's I done. Think, the podcast is done. <laughs> it's done. Um, let, where, 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 where to start? Um, so I, I as many, I, I started uh, at a comprehensive school. Okay, and I loved my schooling years, and I did the standard GCSEs, your A levels, etc. And I then really kind of made, made a conscious decision. I did want to go to university, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to use. I, I, wa I wanted to. I wanted to look at what my A levels, because my A levels weren't in law, uh, but what was going to stand me, uh, you know, in good stead for the future, ultimately. And, and, and pay for pass. So I didn't really know what, what, what I wanted to do, as you, as you rightly highlighted. But law was a good option for me. My, uh, my mother was a teacher, and we've come from a, a, an interesting background ourselves as, as, as a family. And university was, okay, how do I get into university? I had no idea. I, I, yeah. you know, I had very little idea, um, because apart from my brother, my brother and I were the first to go to university uh, in, in our family or families and it was a, a whole new world for us so yes I did learn from my brother but uh, <laughs> uh you know I was uh, hot on the footsteps of my brother going to, going to university is it helpful Nick if I say you know why why law um, yes. yeah um, and, and also obviously bringing in about your trip to uh, overseas as well where you spent yeah. some time overseas yeah so I went to I went to a, a red brick university I started uh, at University of Reading I you had to opt into this but I opted to do a four-year uh, a four-year course that was law with European studies ultimately and uh, why did I opt to to try and get onto that kind of that additional year is because uh, University of Reading great university really strong for law you had to get good grades to get into uh, in, in, into the faculty but it was not one of the elite universities for law yeah. um, and I was really quite conscious of that because you know, how do you differentiate yourself mm -hmm. as, as an individual um, and one of those ways at that time, which is probably still stand today, is I need to do something different. I need to stretch myself. I need to go outside of my comfort zone. And so I took a decision to, I'm very lucky and fortunate to go to Holland, where I did a, an additional year or so, uh, which is effectively law and business. Whole different system uh, yeah. in terms of learning, uh, not lecture based. It was all seminar based pretty much with one or two lectures uh, put in for good measure. And uh, you, it was completely different to the UK system. And how did you find that then? Because again, you know, you, you're you're in a system. You're getting used to working in in Reading, the way the university operates there. Then you're thrown into this completely different culture and different way of working. How did you cope with that? Are you are you able to deal with these with situations that are thrown at you? I think so. Everyone has different coping mechanisms, yeah. mechanisms of course, and, and totally respect that. And I think you know, uh, I, I think my personality lends to the fact that I can. As, as anxious as I may well have been looking back yeah. uh you know going solo over to uh, to, to Holland and, and and effectively learning and forging a new life for a year or so I, I just kind of headed straight into it and uh as lonely as it was originally to go into that campus uh in, yeah. in Maastricht and <laughs> go gosh you know who, who what friends am I going to make here actually it all panned out with almost in the first hour or a couple of hours or a couple of days right. um no matter whether you're an introvert or an extrovert there's all different types of people and the wonderful thing about um, 
uh, going to Holland, as I'm sure it is elsewhere, is that there was different cultures there. Um, yeah. And having you know, not been exposed to that many different cultures up until this point, really, apart from maybe your first couple of years of university, it was a whole different ball game for me, but a really positive one. Yeah, um, you got a lot uh, from the experience. I remember you saying to me, you really felt that it, it has helped with your, your personal development as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, but it was done in semesters. So the first semester was ultimately, broadly speaking, Europeans. And then the second semester were uh, American on the whole. And uh, you know, a whole array of cultures from, from Europe. And of course, a whole array of cultures from the US, but very different ways of um, the way that they approach learning and very different ways they approach things socially and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, uh, a real big learning curve for me, but a positive one that's hopefully shaped, you know, some of my personality traits today. Yeah, which is which, again, I think you, you use all these experiences, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I think that's right. And um, I know Nikki, we were talking before, I, I know it will be hopefully useful to mention that um, a, a lot of people that might listen to this podcast throughout university I worked, uh, I, I actually did a, a number of security roles because um, I, I needed to money and uh, I worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights at a, at a very large shopping centre, 5pm till 2 or 3 in the morning. And uh, again, it's all those type of experiences that Yes, I needed the money, but ultimately, again, helped shape uh, the, the, the way that you talked about resilience and grit. That did, you know, and it helped focus my mind um, and it helped focus the way that I was, um, you know, was, was studying at the time. So you came back to finish your final year at Reading after your yeah. year in Holland yeah. and decided that law was going to be for you. I did decide that law was going to be for me. Um, I did not, as you uh, said at the start, I did not have a training contract. And, you know, what a, looking back, what a difficult decision, like many people that I know now and, uh, and will continue to be, did not. I did not have a legal practice course, so the LPC. And when I was at university, the feeder school for feeder law school, sorry, was was Guildford. So all of my colleagues and friends and what have you would be uh, filtered into the Guildford Law School, uh, irrespective of whatever grade you got. Right. Um, and I wanted to push myself even more. So it's kind of building on the blocks of it, it, I've, I've done this year in, in in Holland that was great is that enough I don't know it doesn't seem to be because actually I'm not, I'm not getting the training contract yeah um, am I'm not good enough I hope I'm good enough but what more do I need to do okay well I need to uh, I need to push myself outside my comfort zone I've got the grades I can go to uh, a different law school and I chose fortunate enough to get into Oxford Law School at the time as it was it was Oxhill it's not around anymore who's how old I am um, <laughs> but uh, it was it really was a deliberate push to, to push me outside of my comfort zone um, to build new friendship groups you know I went on uh, tech perhaps wasn't really around there but kind of rent a room kind of thing and I remember meeting up with you know, a, a number of people one who might, won't mind me mentioning their name Kimberly Whitaker, who's now uh, a general counsel the, the, the four of us that kind of got together didn't know each other from Adam um, yeah. and uh, I, I hope that demonstrates that um, as difficult as it is you your determination to kind of succeed and kind of interact as I think we discussed with kind of a, a completely different social group yeah um, uh, and again it's paved the person that I am today and hopefully continue to develop to be. So when you started um, did you feel that you know out, out of depth that you that most people had had already this friendship groups and networks and you were you know trying to to break into that or were you just so focused and determined on achieving your qualification that, that the rest of it happened almost naturally I think it's I think it's probably a bit of both Nikki to be honest because I'm you know, very 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 conscious that effectively without the label okay because then um, Oxford Law School was very good to us but you were the group of individuals and there were a group of us but did not have a training contract um, yeah. and that was very very clear and the Oxford at the time was effectively a feeder school for Magic Circle, or a feeder school for Magic Circle firms. Yeah. Um, and you were not necessarily part of that, that group unless uh, you had the ability to clearly make friends and, uh, and, and, and interact with, again, a different social group. And you know, I'm very fortunate to have been able to do a, a lot of that, but I still had you know, a degree of anxiety around, I am this person. I come from a slightly different background and I do not have a training contract. I'm also the one of, you know, I think there were seven people that also had to work um, and or wanted to work. So I did mystery shopping at the time. 
Oh, um, okay. In, in, in the <laughs> evenings. I can't remember if it was kind of two or three or three or four days a week. So I was doing mystery shopping with six other of my colleagues from uh, Oxford Law School. Um, right. <laughs> to uh, uh, earn a bit, of, earn a bit of uh, you know pin money, so to speak, so I could you know, get go out and socialise with other other people over the year. Fantastic, that's great. <laughs> and so coming towards the end of uh, your qualification, uh, you I know that you were very proactive in trying to find yourself a contract, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I was really, really proactive, um, and 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 you know you have to be proactive whether that's at your, your second or your third year which I was in university or indeed when you don't have one and you're self-funding your LPC yeah. you, you've got to really be proactive because otherwise almost what, what point of doing your LPC it's great but yeah. actually you want something to, to, to move on to so I was very selective with uh, and when I, when I say very selective you're looking at kind of 10 or uh, you know, 10 or 12 law firms and I was I hope proactive in speaking to uh, graduate managers head to recruitment partners where possible at the time um, yeah. and it, go into uh, pretty much every single social activity that I could in terms of drinks or otherwise or seminars um, etc to, to to soak up knowledge um, yeah. to understand okay that that knowledge means that I might need to do this in my application and also to build those relationships and networks which uh, I, I didn't have and, and, and a lot of people didn't have to be fair but a lot of people do have um, yeah. And so it's got to be off your own back, in my humble opinion, to, to, to build and start those networks and to continue that. I know we're going to talk about a bit more about that later, but continue that throughout your career. Once, you know, if you're fortunate and lucky enough to get a training contract, it's not the deal and end all, but they, they are helpful because they can help influence and guide. Yes. Um, and guide you. Um, so, yeah, an awful lot of time and effort was put into, into that. And I was very fortunate, uh, as you rightly alluded to at the start, to be... Um, offered a couple of training contracts when I was in my LPC year, which was um, quite a relief. <laughs> I <have to> say. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I chose SJ Berwin uh, as it was at the time, because I thought I wanted to be a corporate slash private equity funds lawyer, of which I had some pushback from some partners who were guiding me uh, once I got that to say, why do you want to be a corporate lawyer? Mm -hmm because you don't have any experience, which is a very valid point. But uh, I did end up being a, a, a corporate slash private equity um, lawyer at SJ Bowen as uh, and trained and qualified. And what an amazing achievement. I mean, you must have looked back from, you know, looking through, starting a, in the, the comprehensive, comprehensive school, not having lots of people around that you were role modelling to thinking, this is what I can do for my next step and I can be a corporate lawyer, not really understanding what you wanted to, to do longer term and, and then why law and then all of a sudden you're a, a, a lawyer in corporate finance. Yeah, I saw... <laughs> I suppose when you put it like that, Nikki, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but looking back, it, you know, it's uh, it's quite an achievement. And for you know, all, all of the other people that are going through this, you know, it's it's clearly a fantastic achievement. If you, yeah, amazing. Uh, it, uh, hopefully when you get on, to, and you are, or if you're listening, or uh, you are contemplating going on and getting a training contract, just keep persevering. Um, yeah. Because uh, I did, and, uh, and and it happened for me, and you know I, I wouldn't have had it anyway. Even though I'm now not a lawyer, it's a yeah. fantastic career to be in. You worked hard to achieve that, so it's good that uh, you you managed to to get to your end goal. And I know you're a very goal orientated individual, so it's important for you. So then you decided that law wasn't for you anymore. I After did all that hard work, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. That's true. After all that hard work, said, I think um, it's some context to that. I trained for two years, as as the traditional route is, and then I did two years post qualification. So ultimately, four years in um, yeah. as, as a solicitor or a lawyer. Yeah, look, it, it was not a difficult. Sorry, it was not a. Uh, it was a very difficult decision for me to make because you, as you rightly say, you put uh, that awful lot of time and effort in. You've been supported by family. You've been supported by friends and professional colleagues get where you are but um i think the law has changed significantly i should add now because you can get much 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 closer to businesses uh and be yeah. uh, much much uh, more commercial but at the time i uh, was working for a lot of private equity funds and um uh, they were buying businesses you know left right and center and i was like actually you know what? i really want to get closer to um, a business and uh, yeah, how things work and uh, ironically what i've just said there doesn't perhaps tally up with moving into a headhunter role yes. um, but in some ways it's in some ways it does i was very fortunate to um have the opportunity uh, uh to join a uh, a very strong um 
headhunter practice um, uh, in London, who I'm still uh, very good uh, professional colleagues with many of them. And uh, that really enabled me to be have full autonomy to yeah. run one's own desk yeah. Uh, yeah, under a fantastic brand and where you can, you, you don't get me wrong, it's a significant shift because you only really transfer over probably about 10% of your, of your skill set you've learned as a lawyer yeah. um, because you're learning a very different um, trade, so to speak, as a, as a legal headhunter. Um, Although your negotiation skills would have been amazing, I would imagine. Well, hopefully. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed, though. Um, so but what that enabled me to do was really get very uh, close and understand uh, particular law firms' businesses in London and, and elsewhere, um, regionally and, and uh, uh, elsewhere geographically, jurisdictionally, and uh, understand really how people tick uh, yeah. and understand the, uh, the pros and cons of, 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 of many law firms um, in, in the market, whether that's UK, international, global or US. So it was a fantastic grounding for me uh, to learn a, a, a huge amount about uh, the legal sector. Yeah, really, yeah, really. And I know, I know people is one of your passions. Uh, so even getting closer to working with people as well, that would have been, I'm sure for you, you know, quite a natural progression. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I like to see people flourish. I really like people... I like to see people develop. Um, hopefully, my, my my team now at Taylor Weston will be able to tell you that. But uh, <laughs> I, I I really I really genuinely do like to see that. And um, you know, if you if you put the effort into learning, then you will go far. I, I genuinely believe that. Um, and if you continually develop yourself, yeah. you learn different skill sets, etc. It may well be a very steep learning curve, but actually, hopefully, it's one that you can enjoy, even if you change careers like me. Although I stay yeah. in the legal sector. You stayed in the legal sector. And so after so you had the, the period of time when you worked in the headhunting firm and then you moved to another firm to help build the international presence more than you but again still within still within law. Yes, I did. I moved to a, an international firm, which did, has, has done me massively proud. And it was a firm that I joined. It was effectively a fifty million pound business. And when I left, it was a hundred and twelve million pound business. Wow. Um, Is that and- all down to you, Rob? No, absolutely. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of organic growth, but equally there was a lot of inorganic growth. And by yeah. that, I mean you know, lateral, uh, lateral hires, um, nice. uh, teams, uh, office openings, etc. And so I was very, again, you, you keep hearing me say fortunate uh, about this. So I, I do believe I'm very fortunate to be to be part and parcel of that that journey for that for that law firm. And uh, again, a, a massive learning curve for me because I was uh, I used to work for the law firm. Sorry, I used to recruit for the law firm. Yeah. Um, and I was very lucky to be considered for the opportunity for effectively their first full-time recruitment role and see the HR team, as it was called then, and talent team, as it's called now, uh, grow from a small handful of people to a number of people. Um, yeah. And indeed, uh, the recruitment team um, growing exponentially as well in line with kind of the firm's ambition. So, uh, yeah, again, it, very, it, it, really, it really cemented the fact that I'd made the right decision for me personally because I was actually very, very close to the business because yeah. whilst I'm in talent acquisition or recruitment, um, you need to understand you know, a base level plus of marketing, finance, um, risks, broader operational stuff. And, you know, going into the first in-house role for me, that was, that was you know, again, a, way, a, a really steep learning curve, but it comes yeah. back full circle to how can you help yourself professionally develop yourself? How can you be guided and be mentored by others in the business, whether they're more junior with you, whether they're peers or whether they're more senior than you? And, uh, you know, my first law firm, I had a, a fantastic bunch of people that I was able to learn from and they gave the, the, the time, afforded the time to me and indeed many other people to, uh, to, to develop them. So really, really lucky in that regard. And this is also, I think, where your um, passion for ED and I started to really come through because you you were part of a, a leadership team that you were trying to look at strategy and drive uh, agendas forward, and and this was something that was very close to your heart, wasn't it? Yeah, it really is, and it and it has been for for a long time. And it, you know, I'd say that I come clearly come from it uh, uh, through an for an allyship perspective. Yeah. Um, but uh, everything from gender to, to race, ethnicity, and um, uh, and the broader inclusion agenda is is very very important to, to me, as as I know it is to hopefully every organisation, um, but certainly the one I am in now and the one that I was in before, and the the ability to 
uh, take act well to, to talk about things, but then to actually take actions. Yeah. Um, yes, as a firm, but to think about what you might be able to do personally, whether that's through your your current organisation or whether that's off your own back on something that you can do outside of work. And, and that's that's really where my passion comes in in terms of um, uh, mentoring, been mentoring for, for for a long, long time now, ten plus years. Yeah. And that's a range of individuals from school school, school programs that's been with organisations that I've worked for. So that's uh, groups of 16 plus uh, or sometimes 14 plus uh, in, individuals where you, you know, they've never been into the city. You know, a bit like me, never never really been into the city. In fact, they haven't been into the city. And you know, ironically, they, the school that we used to work with was a, was a London-based school. They've never really been into the square mile. I mean, you know, fascinating but yeah. uh, how how awful that they haven't been there um and they don't know what the, the, the potential opportunities might be for them whether that's being a lawyer whether that's being a marketer whether it's being something else whether that's in uh you know it apps whatever it is that they they do not have um just probably like i didn't have i was fortunate with my with my with my mum being a teacher so i had a bit of an insight but yeah they haven't really got any insight and you just see people again you'll hear me say this word a lot but flourish from being a 14 15 year old individual through to um there's, there's one in particular individual who i who i mentored that i've been recently back in touch with they are now in the city and they are now an app developer um Amazing. And you know they've gone from being that individual that at 14 um under that school program but would not speak to you um yeah on day one of mentorship to be in an app developer in the city that is fascinating that's fantastic um, yeah so as i say we we do a number of kind of programs my current firm that support the race ethnicity and let's say the broader yeah um, inclusion agenda but it's it, where possible i I'm, I'm i'm always looking to be involved in that um, yeah. to give back because i did not necessarily have professional guidance because it wasn't really a thing um, which is also I think why you when you know when you talk about networks as well and I know you know going back to your time at Oxford that you had to work so hard to build networks because they weren't naturally there for you and um, you and I've talked in the past haven't we about how important it is to start networking at a young age and even though it feels uncomfortable and you're going through all those um, emotions of who's going to want to talk to me but to really push yourself out there because people want to help people don't they and do that connection piece and and you're very focused around that now aren't you for your teams for yourself or as you say through your coaching and mentoring yeah really really focused I think for me it's you know a a network is really important on on a whole host of different levels um you know whether that's a professional network within recruitment or or talent acquisition whether that's a a broader network outside of the legal sector and outside of recruitment um you know that for me continues to grow and uh, and actually whether it's a network across the the EDI space yeah um uh, and and not uh, a head of inclusion but actually talking to uh and discussion various different points with heads of inclusion again across different industries you you just learn so much that you can bring back to an organization and yes it might not be you implementing stuff in that regard um but you're bringing something back to your organization that can hopefully help people and the wider agenda being being pushed forward so um the more you can soak up knowledge and and soak it up a bit like a sponge you know frankly the better and to be able to do that you need to in my humble opinion, again, you need you do need to grow your network because you want to be being invited to these webinars and these seminars. And you want to be connecting with uh, uh, all sorts of people, uh, mm-hmm. again, from different industries. Yes, you're in your industry um, is, is probably important, but you can bring things for us from wider professional and financial services um, into the legal into the legal sector. And you, know, you have you you, you 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 adapt certain things uh, for your sector, yeah. but. It's massively, massively important, and uh, it's fun as well. Um, you know, yeah. you, you don't have to be a, a, as I say at the start, you don't have to be a, a massive expert. You just as uh, as hard as sometimes it is, we're coming out of the COVID period to, to walk into a room with people you don't know. That is a massive challenge, and 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 uh, you know, I'd be lying if I still said you know I, I don't find that a little bit anxious when I walk mm-hmm. into a room. But actually, you you got people are people and people like to talk to people generally speaking and if you've got some one or two good questions uh, and actually researched the the room to the extent you can 
um, before you go in, you've got the ability to connect with people in, in uh, on a whole host of levels again and to follow on that conversation as appropriate, post that meeting or post that webinar. And, you know, you might not speak to that person for, I don't know, uh, a year or more. Uh, for example, I uh, have recruited a fabulous member of my team more recently, and I met them on a uh, webinar in COVID, actually around um, Powered Eagles, but also around the broader kind of gender race okay. ethnicity piece. And that was at least two years ago. Uh, we've reconnected and now he's uh, sitting in the talent acquisition team here at Taylor West. There's Brilliant. a story for you. Yeah, that's, that's a very good story. A very positive one, isn't it? That's a very positive one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> good one to use as an example. And so when you when you were coming to the, towards the end of your time at RPC, I know that, you, as you mentioned there, there was a great deal achieved. It grew, the team grew, the firm grew. And what was the decision behind you then deciding it was time for you to move to Taylor Wessing? So my caveat was saying that RPC is very fondly in my mind. <laughs> I Taylor West in different sector focus, a, a larger uh, global firm. It has enabled me, uh, so I've now been here four years, it's enabled me with a stretch um, and the development that um, I was craving and uh, that I was only able to achieve on a larger platform. It, I was brought in by the, the senior leadership team and their vision um, and continued to be brought in by their uh, leadership in their vision and uh, and just the things and opportunities that I could see for myself but more importantly for uh, the wider team as the ambition was there to grow that team um, nice. from when I joined you know it was almost my fourth uh, year anniversary coming up in the next couple of months uh, the team was to give me I forget the numbers not quite right it was six six or seven people we're now 14 so um you know that that's clearly aligned to the, the to the firm and, and, and the firm's you know, fantastic growth story today and uh, what will be in the future. But to be able to to grow that team to where it is today is is fantastic. And to see the people that have been part of that and continue to be part of it and to see them to you know, develop professionally is again it comes back full circle to uh, yeah. me and my my personal values which align with the firm's values and hopefully that's why we're a we're a great little or now lar- larger <laughs> team team of fourteen. And you do very much get a lot of um, satisfaction, don't you, from seeing your team, as you mentioned before, flourish. And I know that's really important to you. And you do want people to stretch themselves and to achieve their personal best, um, their professional best. And there's a lot of development that goes in from you and uh, from your team as well to make sure that they're achieving that, isn't there? There absolutely is. You know, it's really, really important to me, the manager. It's important to other managers within. Uh, the wider TA team, and you know, fortunately, everybody within the the, the TA team uh, today uh, all wants to professionally develop themselves, um, and you know we give them the, you know, the, the the tools and the autonomy to to do so. Because if we don't, you know, uh, they want to look elsewhere. I'm sure, yeah. um, and uh, if we don't give that, then we can't be the best business partners um, that we need to be as a TA team to the wider business. Yeah. Um, you know, we need to be credible. We are credible. And uh, we are seen as the experts in talent acquisition and our knowledge and the way that we business partner with our stakeholders. You, you can only be really good and credible if, 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 if you do continue to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to develop yourself. Um, and that's why, you know, all of the team have got the empowerment to be able to, uh, to, be able to do that. I think that's a good word in terms of empowerment. You know, they are empowered. Um, to, 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 to learn um, and are empowered to bring that learning back into the TA business and the wider business as appropriate so that we can all share from their knowledge because we can't all go on the webinars, we can't all go to these things. You know, yeah. you've, you've got to be uh, learn from each other, can't you? That's the whole purpose, I think. That's the whole purpose, really yeah, important. absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. So share with me what your highlights have been in your career because there's been so many. <laughs> <laughs> One of my highlights was to get certainly certainly get a university place. Okay, I mean that might go without saying nowadays for lots of people. That was a massive highlight for me. It was a massive highlight to be accepted into Oxford Law School because that's never a given again, which then motivated me even more. Clearly, one of the the, the core highlights was to get a training contract because that was the ultimate goal. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, at, at, at a at a preeminent firm, again, massively, massively fortunate um, in that regard. You know, not least though through through hard work grit, determination, resilience, uh, all of the words that you know you described at the start, Nikki. I'm I'm massively proud to uh, to have and continue to be with one fairly um, uh, part of two firms that 
have allowed me and team to, to, to flourish again and the autonomy to kind of uh, play a small part building the, the, the firm through uh, lateral hires, programs, teams or otherwise. And today I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the team that we are, um, that, that team of 14 and the things that we are doing um, you know, collectively across the wider talent team. Yeah, but, I mean, that's, that sums it up, really. It's, yeah, that it, sounds yeah. right. Yeah, and I think also, you know, something that you, you, you've spoken about today and also you and I have talked about quite a bit, the mentoring piece with the, the, the school children and also you've done, I know you've mentored, um, you know, some of the, the partners as well. You know, you've got a whole cross section of the, the mentoring and coaching that you're doing. And I know that's something that means a lot to you as well. It's, you said paying it forward with some of the school children, but also being able to do this full role with all levels. Yeah, it, it yeah, it, it's again paying it forward is a good phrase, isn't it? Um, yeah. uh, but for for all levels, I say, given the example of um, you know it, school school programs, if uh, also this is slightly historic but still important, you know, a, 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 the Lord Mayor's program um, where yeah. two of us from different sector focuses actually went into a uh, a particular school in Dagenham to to look at their careers function, and you know, shockingly for, for both of us, the reality being that. It hadn't really changed since I was at school. I got a printer and said you should be an electrician or a uh, police person or something else, and that hadn't changed. You know, that was a uh, uh, gosh, what a rude awakening for me! What yeah. a, what a shock for me that things need to change and clearly And then you know, all the way through to you no know, hierarchy this, but kind of junior, mid, senior. Uh, individuals, whether that has been, you know, partners or or, or in fa- in house folk that I have helped um, before, and then kind of comes back into the networks of yes. of, of, of building networks for in house lawyers in particular uh, uh, to uh, helping a partner at a law firm by way of example, where she was um, struggling with the fact that she was working four days a week, but work uh, but um, actually really working five but yeah. not being paid for that without this is a, a historic examples so i'm not breaching any confidences but um and and how do you work through that with mm-hmm. your management team um how do you approach that situation you know it's not me for me to, as a mentor to provide the answers it's there to provide guidance and and um and be it act as a sounding board um so it's those type of examples again you know fascinating for me and, and hopefully given uh, back a little bit to to people because um again it's really really important to me yeah that's great and and challenges then what what have you found to be your challenges to break into law in, in, <laughs> in the, yeah it's a, it's a massive challenge and, and uh you know continues to be a massive challenge for for a lot of people i completely um, understand and respect that and of course i'm sure that applies across all industries but you know the advice you know it's easy for me to say isn't it but perseverance um if you persevere um, and you are uh, very focused on what your objective is, yeah. you might be knocked back one, 10, 20, 50 times, but there will be an opportunity for you mm. if you keep persevering. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 but seek guidance to the best of, the best of your ability. Seek, uh, you know, uh, seek some counsel from wherever you can get, get mm. it, even if that's 10 minutes of someone's time or it's a formal mentorship program because uh, whatever you get out of that will be will be valuable. Um, is that, Rob, is that one of the reasons why then that you uh, went down more of the, the talent acquisition role in a law firm? Because that you could actually, because I know you are part of the leadership t- team there and you, you know, you have a voice and you are trying to really help the, the ED&I agenda. So in the role that you're in, you are in a great place to be able to make sure that people are being true and that you can help shape. Yeah, I, you know, amongst uh, you know the rest of the leadership team, absolutely, definitely got, definitely have a voice, um, yeah. and uh, you know, taking action, and then from a, a personal perspective, you know, quite often aligned to kind of for, formal programs, actually put in you know, uh, put, put, put in myself uh, in, into that program and supporting yes. supporting people. You know, there might be ten individuals that we want to support from an ethnicity side, for example. I want to be a mentor for that. You know, if there's if there's 20 people that subscribe to it, then very happy to fall out to give other people the opportunity, of course. But um, uh, I'll always want to put my name forward and and give that time to individuals. I'm you know 
I'm also working with separately, uh, by, by way of example, someone that came forward to me, you can't do this all the time, of course, but someone came forward to me and said, I'm really struggling breaking in um, uh, to, to law. Can you help me? And, and they had good reasons for me to help them. And I say, you can't help everybody as one yeah. person. Um, but I have now, I'm now mentoring that person uh, who has come from a, uh, or who is got a very similar background to me. And so, you know, there's, there's some connection there. And I really, you know, I want to help that person. It could yeah. be others as well, of course. Yeah. But again, it's, the, the, it's so important to me. And, and I know it is to many other people within my organisation and, of course, other people within my wider network. You, you just go back to your, your question, Nikki. One of the core challenges for me was perhaps going back to things have perhaps changed to a degree now, but I, I, I didn't feel like I fit, fitted, um, yeah. actually. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it, that, that, that was difficult. In, in many ways, but hopefully being a half glass full person, it was a challenge that I, I was willing to kind of step up to and try, try and break, break some of that, break some of that mold. And you know what, if you have the example of the, um, being at, at Oxford Law School and, and being the group in inverted commas that yeah. um, didn't have a training contract, well, you know, just speaking to many of my other colleagues who are still friends of mine that had got training contracts at the elite firm, they were really helpful. Yeah, um, you know, don't be shy of um, of going and speaking to people. That perhaps are different and asking yeah. for help because yeah. there's there's absolutely no shame in that. Um, and undoubtedly, I got I got some some good tips and uh, and some guidance from from those from those individuals. Even though at the time I might not have thought it, um, yeah. looking back, I think that's probably right. And actually, I'm like, well, actually, you know, what what's stopping me fitting? Well breaking into the mold and actually changing some of that mold because these a lot of these people are, are, are very receptive and, and they are giving me some help so I'm very grateful to, to all of those people that had already got a training contract and were uh, providing some guidance to me yeah. um, and I suppose the second it's, it's not an unrelated point to that is I'm sure if listen if people listening that have got a training contract or want a training contract otherwise you'll have a very 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 strong career in law um, and it will be absolutely for you um, I don't doubt that but if if you are a, I've had to learn to adapt, um, and I've had to um, and I've wanted to through personal choice. I've looked at things slightly differently and said, actually, I want something different from my career. Uh, yes, I'm still in legal, the legal sector, and uh, you know I, ha- I haven't looked back, um, and I've got a whole host of different skill sets that I might not have got as a lawyer. But equally, yes. I've you know if I had grown as a lawyer, I'd probably have different skill sets to what I've got mm-hmm. now. But um, so there's a path for everybody. Is effectively what I'm trying to. Try, trying to say and you've got to make sure that you're forging the right path and I think you know you've also kept your authenticity throughout and uh, you know as you're as you were saying then about trying to get involved in different networks and different groups and you know feeling different to other people sometimes the easiest thing in the world is to um, emulate adapt and completely change who you are to suit everybody else and I know you adapted because you wanted to in various situations but you haven't changed you at at the core and I think that's incredibly important yeah it's it's, it's massively important you've got to be authentic to yourself um uh so uh I I hope I have been in that in that sense um and you you just might be adapting certain styles to certain situations or or whatever it may be and um I think that the more you can immerse yourself you know the right committees for you that you've got a passion to so for example um I I'm part of the cultural committee at Taylor West it's uh it's fantastic because I hear and get to contrib- contribute to lots of different perspectives and I'm learning so much about uh, again d- different cultures that that uh, you know some of it I might have been aware of but a lot of it I haven't been and I can ask questions to actually develop my understanding because I think uh, you've, you've got to be educated and I've, I've mentioned kind of through the allyship lens um, uh, that's really important that I continue to educate myself all things PD and I yeah. um, because uh, and ask right questions to the right people um, and I've you know, been very very again hear me say fortunate a lot but I've been very fortunate to, to learn from a lot of people again about different cultures and, and actually you know that's changed my thinking on, on lots of things and I hope I hope has made me and I I'm, I and lots of people will continue on this journey to make it to make me a better ally yeah I love this fact like you say you use fortunate a lot you worked incredibly hard to be fortunate <laughs> yeah. well yeah, yeah there's no getting away but you've got to work you've got to work hard um, because otherwise you know uh, working hard you, you know there's a balance though but you do definitely have to work yeah. hard uh, 
working smart as well is, yeah, smart is, is, is the yeah. way forward yeah smart and hard Working um, smart. And, and how do you measure success then for yourself in your role? Because, you know, talking to you, I'm sure your team, I'm sure, you know, your, your peer group, see so a very successful man. How are you measuring that for yourself? So certainly feedback. Yeah. Uh, measured on, I, I met, in many respects, I measure myself on feedback because if I'm not doing a good job or the team is not doing a good job, then, um, uh, that you know, we, we have a very strong feedback culture, then we will know about it in a constructive right. way. Um, yeah, right. Uh, so that that I think is really important. So I I, I can certainly measure um, quite a lot in 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 that sense, and uh, equally with the team, I can measure it through through um, uh, you know f- formal feedback or uh, or actually feedback where um, I either get from the business um, or I'm going out proactively to seek feedback because. Uh, you know, we may be great, but actually, don't we want to be all awesome? How can yeah. we be awesome? So viewing it in the positive and saying, well, how can we make that bit, a bit faster for the benefit of the business, but also for the benefit um, of individuals to develop themselves? Because my, my team, all of my teams, but the, 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 the fantastic team at the moment of 14, I, I always talk about personal brand and that can be subjective, right, to measure personal brand. But um, if you can enhance your personal brand, you're absolutely enhancing the team brand um, yeah and uh, the team is the most important thing um age old saying isn't it no i in team and there genuinely is yeah. no i in, no i in team uh, you, you need a leader of a team but actually everybody brings the team on so yeah feedback is probably a really important measure for me yeah i think that's a, a really good point actually and um as you say if if you can judge how you're operating in a collaborate uh, collaborating with each other in the team i think that's that's really important as well and what about so i know you're very open to personal development and it's something that you genuinely search for reach out for which what books are you reading what podcasts are you listening to what would you recommend for people at the moment that you think would help um so uh, obviously this podcast goes without saying. Uh-huh. Of course, <laughs> I of course I listen to this podcast uh, or your podcast. I should say, Nikki. Sorry, a variety of things actually. Specific ones that kind of TA or recruitment related. Um, there's probably too many. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know how it works for this, Nikki. Maybe I can give you a, a list of things and we can attach it somehow to the podcast. Yeah, right. but, yeah. um, there's a load of um, uh, uh, recruitment or TA podcasts I listen to, and there are a lot of uh, well. Uh, there's there's two or three um, again networks that are recruitment or TA related that I am a, a, a member of, um, and again that's a sharing of information. Um, this is not legal uh, sector specific; it's yeah. uh, uh, sector agnostic. Um, and uh, it, it's whether it's on the train, actually communicating with people in real time on the on, on the chat services that we we we, we have. Um, or actually reading a, a short form article on something that's quite interesting it might be on board, you know, it might be something yeah. to do with race and ethnicity. Um, it might be something to do with process. Um, so do I do that every day on a train? No, but do I try and make a, a conscious <laughs> effort to do that a couple of times a week? Yes. Um, I do quite a lot of reading um, in terms of Harvard, Harvard Business Reviews. All right. um, so um, uh, you, know, there's, you can get a lot of those free to air online. Um, I've got a series of books at home, um, quite like books and flicking through the pages. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I read those. I do read management books quite a lot, which uh, I suppose help gives you the theory. Um, yeah. Uh, but that you have to put into practice. I do a lot of reading into um, psychometrics. Um, okay. So obviously uh, in many ways related to recruitment um, or talent acquisition. And like to back those things up um, in terms of actually going forward and being a, a trainer in something. So, for example, I'm trained in Lumina, which is a really fun psychometric. Uh, we can probably put the um, the link on on the podcast, but it's it's uh, it's a really fun psychometric that's based on Jung theory. So oh, it's those I'm types of things. Yeah. Have a little look at that, and then again, I can give you a, a few books for the um, o- o- offline, but certainly around developing my knowledge on. The, uh, the the wider um, race and ethnicity side yeah, um, that's really you need to be educated on that um, mm. in, in my humble opinion okay. so um, yeah yeah, lots that's a lot of, of reading. Of a lot of reading there, yeah, and the network piece as well, which I think is really important of hearing other people's ideas, as you've mentioned as well. I think that's so so important. Yeah, massively important. And I think you know, um, uh, and then 
but no matter what level you are, whether you're just coming into the, the TA uh, talent acquisition world or you're at the more senior end, um, uh, your views are valid, you know, yeah. um, uh, and you've got the opportunity, in, in my opinion, to, to be able to be creative in various different things um, on thought leadership pieces or otherwise. And you know, you're giving something to um, a, an organisation, but equally on the, on the flip side, you know, your name, uh, if it's published, gets gets put up in lights doesn't it yeah. so um it's it's good for your personal brand again and then and, and hopefully by definition for the team brand yeah i think personal brand is so important now and um, what about words of wisdom then so um rob looking at himself when he was at school not knowing what he wanted to do today what words of wisdom would you give to people uh uh gosh we did discuss it didn't we nikki i think um <laughs> the, the authenticity yeah we talked about yeah. authenticity so the power of authenticity be true to yourself. Um, it, it, it is really, really important. People can see through um, a lack of authenticity yeah. um, and, uh, it, it, you know, uh, be confident in the fact that, again, no matter what level you are, whether you're a head of TA like me or you're, uh, you're just coming into a, a, the TA community, uh, you, uh, you, 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 you do, and, and, and in my, again, in my opinion, you should have a voice, but just remain authentic to yourself and be backed up, be credible, um, have the knowledge um, as, best, as best as you possibly can. Seek out opportunities, okay? Um, seek out opportunities, whether that's within your organisation um, or indeed outside of your organisation. Um, and, and by that, I mean, you know, you, you've got your day job um, and there will be opportunities within the day job in, in talent acquisition. But actually, if you're offered an opportunity to um, uh, work on a small or large project um, in responsible business uh, or something like that, then um, you, you've probably got to ask, but uh, try, go for it. If that's what you want to do, um, go for it. It widens your knowledge. It gets you a broader, uh, 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 it does like extend your, 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 your network. Um, and uh, uh, you're going to learn something. You're going to learn a new skill, perhaps, and you've got something to put down on on your CV that you've been involved in this. And um, if you're passionate about it, it's going to come through really authentically. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know the, the power of persuasion, the power of influence, um, or I- influencing. Um, uh, y- y- you may not be the decision maker uh, in in every regard, um, but actually you are the expert. Okay. Um, in, in, in talent acquisition, let's say, uh, for this instance, and, and, and have confidence in, in the way that uh, if you do have that knowledge and uh, you are the expert around the room, um, then you can help guide and influence decisions. It might not always go your way um, for good cause, but you've got that, you, you, you are the person in the room. You have got some form of seat at the table. Again, no matter perhaps what, 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 you, what level you are in the TA team, and if you've got strong influence and skills, then um, that's going to be noticed and it's going to make you much more credible and it's going to make you a much better business partner. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you are, if you're listening, you're a great business partner, but um, you know, the more you can uh, work on that, the better. Fantastic. Um, great and a strong work, work ethic. We talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we should add that in, right? Yeah. Um, it goes a very, very long way. <laughs> Hard work, don't we? Um, yeah. But great, great words of wisdom to end on, Robert. So I just have to thank you so much for being um, on the podcast today. Lots has come out of that. I do think there's perseverance, you know, really working hard, which comes through building your networks, looking at your personal development and finding your voice and that authentic voice and, and really make sure that you're getting yourself heard and speaking to people. So thank you so much for your time today. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks for having me. It's much appreciated. It really is.